Hey channel, Fernando for SkyFi Audio. I've been asked over and over again over the last couple of years to recommend a budget turntable. Um, we sell tons of turntables, but they're mostly super expensive custom builds like this TD-124 or this uh, LP-12 from Lin. So in hopes of finding um, something acceptable in the sub-1000 level, I've been looking around. And uh, this one caught my eye. It's a Denon a VL12. Denon's been making audio gear for, for decades at this point, so it's a well-known brand. And the VL12 is a, a fairly good performing turntable aimed for the DJ market, much like the SL1200 from Techniques. Now the SL1200 has been around for about 50 years or 40 years at this point. It's been around forever, I think 1970s, so maybe 30 something years. Um, and it's come in a bunch of different iterations and Denon jumped into the market not that long ago and came out with something to try to compete with it and that's what we've got here is the VL12. Um, it's made by Denon DJ as it says here professional DJ turntable with true quartz lock. So uh, one of the things that uh, attracted me to this turntable other than the design right is obviously a pure knockoff of the SL1200 is um, a few of the features that are built into it. Uh, first and foremost is the removable of power cords and uh, audio cables. Um, the 1200s always had a captive power cord and captive RCA cables, which has been really annoying, especially for audiophiles that like to mess around with cables. So one of the real nice features that we see here is um, all removable cords. So both the phono output, which sits right here, and the power cable, it's a standard IEC affair which lets you sort of uh, play around with cables. Even the phono cable is, the grounding cable has a, is removable, which is real nice. Um, it comes with the same style and design uh, as shaped tone arm as the 1200. Layout is about the same, but it does come with this really cool LED kit, which I had been adding to some of our custom SL 1200 tables last year. We did a, a, a big run of these with custom LEDs and they were a big hit. So the fact that the Denon already comes with the LED package in place is, is kind of a nice plus. Uh, it's not only pre-built, but it also gives you really neat controls here on the left side for them. We've got both the brightness, the ability to color change, and a setting for the high and the low torque of the motor. And we'll talk a bit more about that later. So we took the, the Denon V12 and we did some of our own tweaking. Nothing super custom, but a few important things. We added uh, a clamp, a record clamp, as most of our high-end turntables have. This particular fare has um, the ability to be screwed down, so it, it locks in really nicely. So you pop the record in, and this one kind of uh, holds it down really nice and tight. Uh, we added a, a pretty thick uh, mat, a custom mat, made out of rubber. It's about eighth of an inch, if not a little bit more, uh, real cool design with it. We changed the head shell. We added, this one happens to be made by Avis, but um, there are a bunch of manufacturers that make much better head shells than would have come with the Denon. Also has much better cabling within it. Then we added one of our favorite sort of mid-range cartridges, the Sumiko Blue Point number three. It's a high output moving coil cartridge just released. This is the latest iteration of it. Super hard to get. Um, also of manufacturing delays and supply chain issues, but we've got a, a few of these blue point number threes. Uh, this one actually is a low output. For the first time ever, they've released the number, the blue point in both high and low output. We're chosen the low output, which is a bit of, a, of an upgrade over the high output. So it mounted really nice and it balanced great within the, the VL12. Uh, and lastly, the cables. We um, we went to our favorite brand, which is Kimber Cable. This is a Kimber Cable Hero Cable in a two meter run with uh, these amazing WBT connectors. These are locking connectors that will essentially pinch the RCA jack once you've got it situated. Great budget cable. I think it's about a 200 to $300 cable at this point. And then for power, we went with a, a custom power cable that we had sitting around. We've got a few of these. Uh, with an IEC. It's about a 14 gauge cable. I'm gonna put these back. So uh, feature wise, 
um, we've got the, the ability to increase and decrease the tempo of the record. This is something audio files don't use. And luckily, Denon has provided a reset button for us to essentially just lock that out completely. So regardless of where this sits, pressing the reset button sets you at 33.3 or 45 RPM. Really nice feature. Um, and then there are settings here for the range of the adjustment, which again, it's not really relevant for audio files. Um, they provide a really cool light here, so you can see the position of your tone arm. Um, and they actually give you two of them, one in a yellow light. Uh, it's got a really nice RCA jack at the end of it. And then they give you a second light in case you want more of a white light. Okay, so this helps you kind of like in a darkened room, see where the stylus is and, and uh, allows you to select tracks properly. Um, they've got their own sort of spin on the strobe. So they have a slightly different groove pattern on the platter than Techniques does. Techniques has always relied on three different spacings for their for the strobes. Um, then I did it a little bit more s intelligently. They actually are able to pick up the reflection from the strobe with just one set of markings, which is kind of neat. So I'm not sure if it's going to show on camera, but when this is dialed at 33, um, exactly the strobe pattern stands still. Now if I increase the speed, you will see it move left and then move right. I suspect it's not going to show up on camera because of the refresh rates, but very cool. Uh, typical on off button here, it's recessed, so you don't hit it by mistake. And uh, like all DJ turntables, this one is incredibly quick to respond for both start and stop. Again, not an audio file feature, but it's kind of nice if you're impatient and you want to get right to uh, changing the record. It does lock and stop fairly quickly. And that's what uh, this setting here is for as well, this high and low torque is to, to increase and decrease the torque of the drive motor. Um, speed selection is done right here between the 33 and the 45. This does not have the ability to play 78s, so if you're into 78s, you're out of luck. But for most folks, 33 and 45 will be enough. Um, it's got a little adapter here for 45 records. And uh, tone arm is pretty, pretty simple. Uh, it has the same sort of adjustability uh, to be able to raise and lower the tone arm. Uh, through this knurled adjustment here, which is really nice. I fit tone arms almost on a daily basis and they're almost always a real pain to set the height for, but uh, Techniques now and then on have done a great job at giving you just a twist action for height. Uh, Anti-skate is set right here, nice and easy. And then your tracking force is set right here with this weight. And it has a scale to help you set the tracking force in case you don't have your own digital scale, which I highly recommend at 35 bucks on Amazon. Pretty much every turntable owner should have a digital scale. Um, cosmetically, um, I didn't show you, but it had the word DJ, then on DJ written all over the case, which I did not like for home. Here's the back pane to show you. So we just made up some quick decals to hide the, the, uh, the branding so that it looks more of like a residential turntable. Um, in terms of construction, it's pretty neat. Uh, it uses aluminum for a lot of it. Uh, for both the top and the front edge is uh, a really nicely brushed anodized black aluminum finish. Uh, on the sides, they're using plastic and they've got some pretty sizable feet. Also finished in, in metallic. Weight-wise, it is almost as inert and as heavy as an SL1200 maybe just a pound or so less. I'll put it on the scale and report back, but you know, it's a fairly, fairly inert, very solid turntable. And we'll, uh, we'll show you its resonance later on the bench. I think that's about it. The price point is just right. It's under $1,000. By the time we do all these upgrades, yes, we're gonna be into the twos, but still a, a pretty neat package for, for that amount. So now I'm gonna move this over to my test bench and calibrate the machine and show you uh, it in action. So hang on a second. Okay, I've made it over to my turntable calibration bench. This is a piece of equipment specifically built 
to help in the calibration of turntables and reel-to-reel -reel machines. So um, it's a specific piece of furniture that I designed. Up top, I've got a Macintosh C2500 old tube uh, phono preamp, I'm sorry, um, analog preamp with a great phono section in it. Below it, I've got a tape calibration piece of equipment, oscilloscope, some monitor speakers from Tannoy. I've got my fuscometer here for setting azimuth. Um, patch panel to make all the connections that I need for the turntable. Turntable sits on a, a very high grade swivel platform uh, to help get to the back and the sides of it as needed. Um, and then below it I've got essentially a drawer with every piece of calibration equipment I need on a daily basis. I've got scales and drivers, all sorts of gauges, got my protractor, a camera system, really just just everything right at hand, which is really nice. So first order of business uh, with any turntable cartridge mounting is to set the length or the distance between the pivot and the uh, stylus. That's using this Dr. Fiker analog protractor. So I've already done that and it's, uh, it's lined up just perfectly at this point. So I've set the essentially the length and it happened to line up very nicely with the front of the cartridge, which is a good sign. Um, second to that, I, I set the tracking force using uh, a standard analog gauge, tear it out, so I've already set this to uh, 2.2 2 grams. Uh, and that's done utilizing the, the counterweight here. It screws in and out, essentially. I will then uh, set the height of the tone arm, and that's done by placing a record in place and then getting uh, using essentially a calibration scale to, to visually align or parallel, make sure that the tone arm is in fact parallel with the record surface. I'll do that off camera because it's a little cumbersome to do while I'm filming. Um, after that, I'll do that same thing for the, for the rotation of the cartridge and I'll use um, both this acrylic block and I'll also use the fuzzometer to compare left and channel, right channel output. And then from then on, I'll move on to my test record and, and sort of see what sort of results I get, see what its tracking ability is, where its resonant frequency sits, etc. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a bit of that and then come back to camera as well. Okay, I've completed calibration. I set the arm height anti-skate, tracking force, I did all the geometric alignment of the cartridge and we're good to go. I've got my favorite test record up here, the Hi-Fi News and Record Review. Uh, here's a picture of the front cover, it's called the Analog Test LP. It's really my go-to calibration record at this point. I do flip between a few of them depending on the turntable, but this one I get the most out of. It's got some really nice sections got the first couple of tracks are left and right channel just oral identification my voice is recorded on the right hand uh, the next one is some pig noise then specific left and right this is very helpful for the fuscometer and then I've got some sort of torture tracks the next four tracks are essentially uh, one kilohertz at different uh, magnitudes and this is where I can this is where I can kind of see uh, anti-scape performance uh, you can see here on the oscilloscope the evenness between the left and right channels as I increase and go to the next track you'll start to see some distortion on one of the channels here's track number two and it's still <coughs> excuse me it's still tracking pretty well I've got anti-scape set at two I go to the third one, <coughs> you'll finally see some pretty heavy distortion on one of the channels. You can kind of see it right here. Um, and uh, the anti-skate has an effect on that distortion. So this is where you can see it kind of cleaned up the top of the wave at that point. And this is where I kind of make an assessment of how much anti-skate I need to dial into a record. Um, there are other ways of doing it, and there are more complicated ways, but I've gotten pretty good results on this. 
Um, so this uh, particular turntable needs about a setting of two um, to be right at the right compromise level. So then I flip the record over. Um, and it's got a really nice track for its um, the resonance test suite, which is uh, the track number two here. And this lets me know a bit more about compliance. Um, as it goes through the different frequencies, it'll start to wobble. 15 hertz. Pretty neat test. 13 hertz. 11 hertz. So you'll start to physically see the cartridge begin to wobble. 9 hertz. That's 9 hertz right there. And when it reaches its seven. highest point, that's at 7. It's settling down again. So it's about five 9. Hertz. Yeah, it's now to 5 hertz. So it's about 9 hertz is the resonant frequency of this tone arm cartridge combination, which is pretty good. Um, OK, now I'm going to put on a different record. Oh, one of the things I don't like about this turntable is the, the holder. You just saw the arm kind of pop out a bit and kind of flail about. Um, so this plastic holder is not as compliant as it could be. I imagine it's going to break in over time. It takes a bit of pressure to get it to lock. Um, I see there's a little adjustment in there or some sort of spring loader retainer. So yeah, I got a feeling this will kind of settle in over time, but um, I think for regular use, you just kind of lay it there. And then when you really want to store it, you can kind of go a little further to the right and click it into place. It's really the only thing I haven't liked so far about this table. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a record on and play some music. Okay, now we've got uh, some Bach playing. So overall, real nice performance out of this uh, V12. It calibrated easily. Uh, there were no surprises in performance. Um, and so far, it's really been a delight. Um, a few things I haven't shown you yet is uh, the color changing feature. That knob that we've got here on the left will change between different colors. A little bit silly, but uh, I like to keep it just on white. It helps kind of position everything in a dark room, which is nice. Um, the lifter itself, uh, on the way down, it's fabulous. It's nice and slow, which I like. Um, on the way up, it's a bit fast. Um, so it kind of just springs up. I would have liked it just a little bit uh, more gradual, but I guess you can just do it more gradually yourself. Um, the height's still a little too high. I have to adjust the lifter. I see a screw right here. I suspect that's what that's going to be. Uh, but I'll do that off camera. I haven't locked this yet. Or actually, I did. Um, so there it is, the Denon uh, VL12. Um, great turntable for the price. Um, we don't, we're not a Denon dealer, but we do have just this one piece that we've used for the review. So we'll put this up on our website as the complete package. If you see this video a month, two month, a year from now, it's going to be long gone. But the then on VL12 is available online. It's an easy purchase from Amazon or any other retailer. And if you want uh, the Sumiko and some of the uh, Kimber cable, you can visit our website at skyfiaudio.com. These are the, the Kimber cable heroes that we talked about. You can find these on our website uh, in uh, half meter increments. The Sumiko Blue Point number three. Uh, hopefully, we can keep it in stock. It's quite a performer and a great value, so uh, don't be surprised if we run out of them from time to time. Um, that's it. If you want one of these put together, completed, and calibrated, you can reach out to us through our email, 
and we'll go ahead and order cake delivery and, and put the rest of the bits and pieces on it for you. Please visit our website, skyfiaudio.com, where you'll see hundreds and hundreds of pieces of equipment. Uh, subscribe to our channel, and in our website, you can also subscribe to our newsletter, which goes out every Friday, where we feature 15 brand new products that have arrived to our shop. And by brand new, I mean new to us, mostly vintage uh, audio equipment, as you can see from a, br a brief pan of our tech area here. This is all work in progress. So I really uh, appreciate you watching and thanks for your comments below. Uh, I'd like to hear from everybody. If you take the time to fill in a comment, I do go and answer all of them. So thanks again for watching.